Welcome to Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Series. I am your host, Captain Matt. Today we're talking inboard outboards versus jet drives. So stern drives, IOs, inboard outboards versus the jet drive like the Yamaha, the Scarab, the Vortex, uh, some of the Sea-Doo jet boats that have been out there. So let's take a look. They look very, very similar, and we're going to focus on propulsion today. But if you look, they both have the motors inside and the the propeller or the unit that propels the boat on the exterior. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. On the right, you can see the stern drive where the big motor is inside the boat, usually under that swim platform. And then it goes through the transom to the back of the boat and down into the water. Your water level is about right here, somewhere right at the top. The jet drive, you've got single or twin engines in the boat. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then instead of having this big propeller and a lower unit, you've got a small jet drive system that sits just below the surface of the water. It's sucking water in about two thirds of the way back, a little bit further than halfway, sucks that water in through an intake grate. It runs it through the M peller, not the propeller, but the M peller that rotates and it shoots that water out of a small nozzle. So it comes in big, it gets narrower and narrower and shoots out that small nozzle, which then has directional control and that nozzle will move and it's got a little bucket or some other system, depending on if you're talking about the Rotax or the Yamaha jet boat engine. It shoots through that nozzle and that's how it's propelled. The stern drive, you've got the whole drive is going to turn and that propeller thrust is going to turn, but you also have somewhat of a rudder effect, whereas the, the jet drives don't. But they've recently, like 2013, 2014, they started putting a rudder system on it and they have aftermarket rudder systems on it that you can put on a you know an 09 that uh, will give it some better handling characteristics. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each. Now, I, I don't think that there's a good one or a bad one. I think it depends on how you're going to use it. So one of the big things is there's no exposed propeller. So you don't have that, that propeller sitting out there. It's usually on newer boats under the swim platform. So it's kind of tucked away. The winterization maintenance is easier. Uh, all you do is, is fire it up. You rev it up a couple of times, you shoot all that water out, and you don't have to worry about freezing. On the stern drive, the way that water comes in, it sucks it up and into the engine to cool. On most of them, the newer Volvos have a closed cooling system, so it's not the same, uh, but you still have to do, you still have to drain that water out of the engine and get it outside the boat. It's easier to maintain than salt water again because you're not pulling water up and in, and they have tend to have an easy flush that you can hook up. Uh, and again, because of the way the system works, it's um, it's a better suited for saltwater when you're comparing stern drives and jet drives. We'll do a jet drive versus an outboard, uh, and you can watch that in another video. There's some areas where they're different, but I don't know that there's a positive or a negative. So the sound. The stern drive is going to have a deeper sound. It's going to run at lower RPMs and it's going to have more torque. So it's more of a throaty sound. Um, the lower RPMs, because you've got that bigger propeller turning and it's screwing through the water and it gives you better propulsion and it's at it's got a lot of torque because of that big propeller uh, or twin propellers that are out there, depending on what you've got. The jet drive, it runs at much higher RPM, so it has a higher pitch sound. Not that one's better than another. They've done a real good job in the last five, ten years of quieting the sounds of the jet drives and of the stern drives. Both of them, they brought the decibel level down. And because you've got that smaller impeller that's shooting water out and it's kind of a jet nozzle, you have less torque. Now, what you do have, because that stern drive is deep in the water and you've got that propeller down there, you've got about a three foot draft and it depends on the exact boat, but about a three foot draft on a, 
on a um, jet drive because you have that nozzle that's almost at the at the bottom of the boat, that bottom keel of the boat. Um, you're only at about 18 inches. Um, on the flip side, they say, hey, you can run in shallow water. But what you do have to be careful because the jet drive is picking water up from the bottom and there's kind of a suction effect that takes place. So it can suck up weeds and it can suck up rocks, which are really bad because they can damage those impellers. And now you've got a, you lose efficiency, you lose performance and you have a, a, a repair on your hands. So in my mind, they're equal because you really don't want to run a jet drive engine in, you know, less than four foot of water. Um, although you can, you just, you risk sucking up debris, rocks, uh, pebbles and things that can cause problems. Uh, the stern drive, you know, you're going to, you're going to hit your skeg, although you can lift those up. Um, I, I, I think they're different, but equal on the stern drive, because you have that higher torque and you, that, um, the per big propeller, you can run a single engine up to a 26, 28, 30 foot boat. I, I've, I've ran a, a 30 foot sea ray deck boat, a big heavy boat with a single engine and it ran great. Um, on a jet drive, um, a Yamaha, a Scarab, a Vortex. Now we're not talking the, the outboard jet drives. We're not talking about the big, huge jet drives that, uh, you know, the coast guard will run. You're typically, once you get to about 21 feet, you're going to go to twin engines because they have less torque and because they run at that higher RPM, they need the twin engines. It gives you some extra maneuverability because you have thrust from both of those engines versus a single propeller and rudder on the stern drive. But then you've got a little bit more maintenance. You've got two oil changes, two of everything on the maintenance. Um, but again, it's different, but I don't think one is better than another. I wouldn't say, oh, the defendant having twins on a 23 foot boat is, is better. Um, it's just different. Large swim platforms on the, on the stern drives. Again, typically you're going to have that big swim platform that comes and, and covers that lower unit and that prop on the newer boats for the past 15 years, maybe more, um, they've been building those bigger swim platforms. If you're looking older than that, sometimes that swim platform isn't very big and it's integrated in. Uh, on the jet boats, the, um, they've got the swim platform and it's at water level, which is it's about another three, six, eight inches down and it's right at the water level. So you can usually just kind of pop your butt up and sit on it. It's awesome at the sandbars. You, sandbars you've got dual level seating uh, and it's, it's really nice. Not one's better than another. They're just different. Figure out what's right for you. Less drag in water sports. What I mean by that is because you've got that big stern drive in the rear and it's deep in the water and it's kind of a rudder, when you've got a skier or a wakeboard pulling, it's going to pull fairly straight. It's not, it's not going to pivot too much. If you know a big 220 pound guy like myself cuts on a slalom ski, I might bring that stern over just a touch. But if I did that on a jet boat, because you don't have that deep rudder, even if you have the, the rudder system on it, like they do now, I'm still going to pull that jet boat over, uh, because of that force coming against the boat and it's going to be harder to steer. That's the drag I'm talking about. I'm not even sure if that's the right word, but um, it has better wake shape and less white water. So because you're using the propeller, you're going to, and you can adjust the trim, the angle of that lower unit on a stern drive, you're going to be able to have a better crest. That's a solid crest versus all the white water that you're shooting out of those nozzles. It's going to, um, it's going to give you a, a different wake. Matter of fact, it's going to be more whitewash, which isn't going to be a solid to jump off of wakeboarding or surfing or something like that. It's going to give you a smoother ride on a stern drive because you have the ability to trim the engine and trim the angle of attack of that bow into the waves. Uh, it's going to give you a smoother ride when you use that. And there's also, there tends to be more technicians available that can work on Mercruiser or specifically, uh, and even Volvos than a jet drive engine because you have the, the Yamaha and the Rotax and, uh, you may have to end up taking your boat to a power sports type dealer, uh, to do that work. 
and they're a little bit different working on a boat versus a jet ski uh, versus a wave runner. So there's, I, I give that advantage to the stern drive. Now let's talk about how you use the boat and where I think it's best. So on a jet drive, the sandbar, I love the jet boats because of that double decker back end at the sandbars. I think it's great. Uh, extended season in colder weather because it's easier to get that water out uh, when you're trying to avoid any freeze damage to your boat. Um, where they're equal, the perception of being safer. Jet drives have really focused on safety as a feature when selling against a stern drive because, hey, there's no big propeller uh, on the, you know, right in the back of your boat where people are jumping off and swimming. The reality, and I say it's perception because the reality is when you keep your stern drive tilted down, you tell the kids, hey, there's a, a propeller down there. Don't go near it. Don't jack around by the back of the boat. Um, it, it's, it's a non-issue, especially when you've got that big swim platform that's covering it and it's six inches deep under that swim platform and, uh, you know, about two and a half feet down. So it's more of a perception, but for some people that's important and uh, it's something to consider. The jet drive boats are more fun. They're quicker and they're sportier. And I mean, more fun to drive. They are, it's like running a sports car versus running a, a luxury sedan. Um, so the stern drive gives you comfort. So it depends on which one of those. If you're a, a speedster and you like to get and rip around um, and, and you like to accelerate quick, the jet drive does that hands down better than the stern drive. The stern drive, because you've got that deep propeller deep into the water that's going to hold tight, it's going to give you a nice up and smooth ride. It's going to, it's going to be about the same speed overall, but it's not going to get there as quick. Um, and it's going to give you a smoother, more comfortable ride because you can adjust the trim. Stern drives are great in freshwater jet drives, great in freshwater and saltwater. We talked about the maintenance of it. It's, it's a better system, um, than the stern drives in saltwater. In my opinion, if you have a lot of weeds in your lake, a stern drive is probably going to be better because you're going to have to less chance of sucking those weeds up in that intake. Remember how the water sucks up from the, the back half of the boat into that grate, which filters out some of them, but then it goes through that impeller and that's where the weeds can get hung up. Rotax has a patented design where it's supposed to um, kind of eliminate those weeds and not get them wrapped around the propeller shaft. Yamaha has a clean out port that you can reach in when the boat's off and, and clean that out. But either one, you've got to deal with it. If you've got a lot of weeds in your, in your lake and you're running in shallower water. Um, if you're buying a boat that's older than let's say 2005, I'm going to swing to stern drives because the jet boats were just coming on the scene they weren't really dialed in that great yet. They've made a lot of improvements in the last 10, 15 years, but the stern drives, they're more plentiful. So you have a better option of finding a boat that's been well-maintained and is in good condition with the jet boats. There's de there's fewer of them. So you have fewer to find the ones that are in really good condition. And because the people that tend to like jet boats, they like them because they're fun and they're quick and they're sporty. They tend to run them harder. Okay. The stern drive, it's more about comfort and they tend to be better taken care of. It doesn't mean everyone is, doesn't mean that's always the case, but overall you're going to have a better chance of finding an older stern drive. That's going to be less problematic than an older jet drive. That's why and on the used, I tend to push towards stern drive as probably a better option. Um, if there's no jet drive mechanics available in your area, there's not a good technician stern drive is probably the way to go. If you want quieter, you want less vibration, uh, stern drive is probably the way to go. If, if you're just finding this video and you're trying to make the decision, there's another great video on my first time boat buyer playlist on the channel, jet boats, stern drives, outboards and inboards, where I go through everything. So you might want to check that out. Uh, click on the link here for that playlist. If you are new to boating and you're looking at buying a boat, you can check out that Boat Buyers Toolkit. It's free. Just go to boatbuyersecretweapon.com slash toolkit. You can grab it there. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoy this. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.